Okay, today we're doing an abdominal assessment. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check the patient's chart. I'm going to perform hand hygiene. I'm going to enter the room, provide privacy, introduce myself to the patient. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm going to be your student nurse today. And uh, you came in to do an abdominal assessment. Uh, could I have you verify your name and your and your birth date? Uh, my name is Brian LeBeau. I was born January 14, 2000. Thank you, Brian. Um, so, Brian, I have some questions for you here. Um, have you had any abdominal pain or anything? Have you had any accidents or any traumas to no. the abdominal area? When I say abdominal area, you, you know, pretty much what you would call yeah. your belly area, right? Okay. Um, have you had any surgeries on it? No. Okay. Has mom and dad had any surgeries? No. No? Okay, so you've never heard maybe they said a glad gallbladder or an appendix or anything they had removed? No. Does it sound familiar? Okay, that's good. Um, so, Brian, um, at this time, uh, well, no, I guess I got a couple more questions for you. Um, have you had any painful urination or anything like that lately? Uh, we'd say pretty normal, heavy stream, you yeah. know, constant stream. Okay. Um, what about any abnormal colors or smells? No. Okay. Now, what about when you're sitting down on the toilet? Are you noticing any bowel movements, anything abnormal? No. You haven't, how, how would you explain those? Are they like daily, every other day, once a week? or Daily. Daily. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, okay, so at this time, go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to give you some privacy. You can go ahead and lift your shirt up or remove it, whatever is more comfortable for you. And then we're going to do a, an assessment. I'm going to be using my stethoscope and I'm going to be touching your skin and palpating a little bit, okay? All right. All right go ahead. Give you some privacy. All right. All set? Okay, good job. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a skin assessment. So uh, I'll have my patient go ahead and, and lay back carefully. All right. How are you feeling? Good. Okay. Um, not dizzy or anything like that from that? Okay, good. Uh, so I'll go ahead and lay your hands uh, either up or down, either right to the side. That'll work for you. Good. So what I'm looking for right off the bat is his skin. I want to make sure that it's appropriate for the rest of his body. Um, I am seeing a little redness up above here, but that could be because he just had a shirt on. Or are you feeling a little, a little warm? No. Okay. This body temperature is even all the way down, so I don't think that's really anything to worry about. Um, <clears throat> I note that the contour of his body, um, I'm not seeing any bulges on either side, so no masses. I don't see any pulsations, so that's telling me that if I saw that, I, I would be concerned with maybe like a triple A, which is abdominal aortic aneurysm. Uh, I'm not seeing that going on here. I don't see any distended veins or anything, so there's no concern there, which is good. Um, I already checked the temperature and when I did that I noticed that there was not an abundance of moisture or dryness or anything so uh, that seems fine. I'm not seeing any scars or lesions, uh, no tattoos, no piercings of any kind so uh, all in all is a, a quick assessment here. I, I think he looks fine. So the next thing I'm going to want to do Brian is I'm going to take a listen to your abdominal area um, and when I do that I'm going to in my mind I'm going to divide Right here, a line that goes across, a vertical line and a transverse line. And did that tickle you? That's yeah. funny. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so what I'm going to do is divide this into four areas. Um, and one thing that I note real quick, I noticed that his belly button, um, or umbilicus as we would call it, is it's localized in a normal place. So that's something I forgot to mention. Also, hair distribution looks normal. So well, I think of these things as I go sometimes. Okay, so um, here's his left lower quadrant so it's a llq right upper quadrant right i mean i'm sorry a left lower quadrant left upper quadrant right upper quadrant right lower quadrant okay um and when i do my assessment i usually start on the left and i work my way around to the right so i'm what i'm listening for is uh some gastric sounds i want to make sure that i can hear that uh I can hear some sounds. I should be hearing five to 30 sounds in a minute. And uh, one thing that would be a good question to ask at this time was, Brian, when's the last time that you had something to eat? Uh, within the last hour. Within the last hour, okay. Yeah. So that's good. What I'm, what I'm asking for is because if he hasn't eaten since maybe 5.30 a.m. and it's now like six o'clock p.m., um, I might not hear as much activity in there. And I would know that, okay, I'm not hearing a lot of activity, and that's normal because he hasn't eaten in a while, but I still need to hear activity. If I don't hear any activity at all, then that tells me that I need to listen to that quadrant that I don't hear activity in 
for five minutes straight without stopping. And I have to listen intently to find out if, if there's any sounds or not. If there's not, that's a serious problem. Um, and then I would want to do the same for the rest of the, the remaining three quadrants. And so that's five minutes per quadrant if you don't hear any bowel sounds. And at that point, you might want to uh, notify your doctor immediately. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a listen. Use the diaphragm. One other thing I want to point out is you always want to listen, you know, auscultate before you continue on with other parts of your procedure, such as percussions and palpations. Um, and that's because you don't want to stimulate any peristalsis. You already want to hear what's going on in there before you stimulate anything. That's why we listen first. That was it. <laughs> All right. I can hear some gurgling. Good. So I'm listening to two spots in each quadrant. I don't know if I'm yelling. Two spots in each quadrant because he's nearly six foot tall. Um, if he was like six foot eight, six ten or something, I might want to do three areas in there just because it's a bigger cat, bigger space. Um, and then of course, you know, if you have a small adolescent that's maybe under five foot tall uh, or four foot tall or however, you may want to only go to one or two, just depending on the patient. So that quadrant was good. This is your left upper. I hear gurgling. Good, gurgling. Again. Good. Lots there. Even more there. Okay, so he's, he's got an active bowel. Things are good there. Um, so the next thing I wanna do is <clears throat> I'm gonna wanna use the bell because I'm gonna listen for a brewery. Uh, so you always remember Bell Brewery, Bell Brewery always goes together. Um, so I'm listening for his, his A order right now. Good. I have normal sounds, so that's good. Um, so you're going to keep your, your bell on, and I want to listen to his iliac arteries and his renal arteries. And to do that, if you take your fingers like piece, right, and you put it at his umbilicus, you should be able to line up pretty much right where those are going to be at. Good. And the same for the renal arteries. Excellent. All right, so there's no brewery sounds there. All sounds good. <clears throat> Next thing I want to do is I want to percuss. We know percussion. You're going to use your the knuckle of your non-dominant hand, and you're going to tap it with the fingertip of your dominant hand. And you're just going to do the same thing in the quadrants. So the lower quadrant should have like a tympanic sound, which it is. You shouldn't hear a dullness because there's no organ or bone or anything that you should be hearing. Now if you do, it could be a mass of some kind and you would want to investigate that. So I'm in the left upper quadrant. Good. Good. Right upper quadrant. Right lower quadrant. Good. All right, so now I'm gonna palpate. You wanna do a light palpation and then a deeper palpation. And we're just feeling around for tenderness. When we do this, you want to look at the patient's face a lot. And if they kind of grimace or wince or something, then you know that, okay, well, maybe there's something going on there. And you want to investigate that. Um, because they may say, oh, no, I'm not feeling any pain. But their face is telling you another story. So you want to investigate that. Go ahead and lay your hands flat. All right. So a light palpation, right? No signs of discomfort in his face. You can ask the patient too, are you feeling any pain when I do this? No. If you do, you let me know, okay? All right. Okay, good. Often it's a good idea to have your patient void before you do like a deep one. So obviously you want to do that before they came in there because it's kind of late now. But when you're pushing deeper, you're pushing in that bladder area and you wouldn't want them to accidentally void. Um, some people have a weaker bladder and so it might be a good idea to mention that, you know, well, have you used the restroom lately? You know, why don't you go ahead and take a minute and use the restroom? Um, just to save the patient some embarrassment. So this is deeper. Any pain? No. No discomfort? Okay. You tell me if you felt it, right? 
Right. All right. Again, I'm in the four quadrants, okay? Left lower, left upper, right upper, right lower. Okay, and so that is gonna conclude the, the assessment here. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna help you out, go ahead. Come up, not too fast, how you feel? I'm fine. Good, not lightheaded or anything? No. Always assess your patient to make sure they're okay and that they're comfortable and not, you know, um, lightheaded or anything. Um, so at this time, I would perform hand hygiene and I would ask my patient if they have anything that they would like to add to this because maybe they have something going on at this time. Um, I could ask about medications. Are you on any medications? No? Okay. Uh, that's not always pertinent, but maybe, you know, it's never a bad question to ask. So after I perform hand hygiene, um, I'm going to discuss the findings with the patient and then I'm just going to go ahead and make a, a note in the chart that what we found today. So, and that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it.